Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nyambura and this is 100 on Books. I feel like I've been away from here for a thousand years, <laughs> which might explain why my slow reading self has seven books to talk about today. Um, as usual, I'll start from the one that was published earliest to the one that was published most recently and let's do this. Um, the first book I'll talk about is Eleanor Knows by Claudia Pinheiro and it was translated by Francis Riddle. Um, I read this book, I picked this book up actually because it's on the um, International Booker Prize shortlist and it's available on Scribd. So I was like, hey, you know, a book where I don't have to worry about how long the loan will be, etc. And per usual, I used... Um, scribed because I got 60 days free via my friend Linda Barassa's link and I was like I'm in you know I'm in and I'm gonna stay in um, yeah so I'll share a link a uh, script link downstairs so you can also jump in on the fun anyway it's really short it's under 200 pages and it's it follows our main character Elena on a day when she's grow going through the city and trying to find someone who can help her solve the mystery of her daughter's death her daughter was found hanging in a belfry in the local church she's convinced that it wasn't a suicide everybody else is convinced it's a suicide and so we follow her she goes back and forth and we get glimpses of what her daughter was like and this book is really about history and the body because elena has parkinson's and that really affects how she goes through her day so much so that the book is structured around the times when she's taking her medication because when she's not medicated she can barely move and so her mission actually is to go across the city and find somebody whose body she can borrow so to speak somebody who can in an ableist world be seen and who can be believed and who can go to places she's unable to go to and speak to people who um would be hard for her to access and so on and the ending is so powerful because this is a book throughout that has been about the body you know the vagaries of being in a body having a body um one's body betraying them but it's also about not being a man like what it means to move through the world in a body that's not coded male you know what that means in a highly patriarchal society what that means in a society where women's choices are doubted are disregarded and so on it was so good uh as i said it's under 200 pages so i was done with it in no time but i know it's going to stick with me for a really really long time and yeah all i'll say is reading it in the same week as the conversations about roe v wade in the u.s was quite something because yeah these questions have nothing have something to do with questions of bodily autonomy have something to do with abortion yes but they also have a lot to do with all these other ideas about who gets to be seen um who gets to still be able to participate in public life once they are disabled what it means to be disabled and so on if you hear some knocking in the background it's because uh i live in a society <laughs> this is a running theme right here right okay so that's first book and then next up is guts by reina tegelmeyer um Telgemeyer. i hope i said it right the second time and i wait actually next up is everything is teeth by evie wilde uh, which is a graphic novel about Evie Wilde's period during childhood when she was pretty much obsessed with sharks. I mean, obsessed. And the context here is that Evie has an Australian mother and an English father. And so she would take holidays in um, Australia where you know like they'd go to the beach and so on and actually her dad shows up in very strange ways it's part family drama part obsession with sharks part mental health um like excavation of her family and so on and 
it was really gripping, you know. Um, I read it as I was traveling. I think I mentioned this the last time I spoke to you, which is to say the last time. <laughs> I recorded that I was going to be traveling. And so during that travel, I, I read this and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, that's it really. Like, it's really a story about obsession and and the places obsession can lead one and so on. Yeah. It was fun, you know. <laughs> um, then Guts is the next one. Guts, which I started talking about earlier. Guts by Raina Talgemeyer. Also autobiographical. And this is about how Raina as a child starts to experience what you as an adult reader will recognize as anxiety and things just spiral out of control, you know. And so... Um, yeah, she gets help eventually, and I found the postscript about, you know, living with anxiety and navigating that, and navigating the world as a person with anxiety really touching, because I think that's something that a lot of us, after <laughs> a certain age, can um, relate to. So, yeah, and it's also very accessible for younger readers. It's the sort of thing where, um, if you're an older reader, you know, like... Um, 105 <laughs> uh, or if you're an older or if you're a younger reader or if you're a, an older reader reading with a younger reader this is something you'll all get to enjoy so and then next was charming as a verb by ben philip narrated by james for him this is a ya novel about this kid who <laughs> Ah, uh, his name is Henry, and he runs this dog walking business, which he presents to the world as you know this app that's you know a successful venture, blah blah. What not a lot of people know is that he is the app, he is the entire venture. It is a one boy operation, one teen operation, and he's trying to raise as much money as he can so he can be able to afford to go to Colombia which has been his family's dream, by which I mean his father's dream and his mother's dream since he was a kid. And then this kid in his building called Corinne, who also goes to his school, which is like a very, you know, like fancy, schmancy school, which he's gotten into as a scholarship kid, but she's in as a paying student and they live in the same building because his father is the superintendent of the building. That's what Americans call them. I think Kenyans will call them like caretakers, but yeah, yeah, a caretaker of the building. And so Corinne finds out pretty fast that he is the lone person behind the operation and essentially blackmails him into um, helping her become more popular at school because um, she really struggles with that. She really struggles with fitting in with her peers. And so the two of them help each other out in, in a variety of ways. And I think that starts off as a minor part, but grows in significance is that Henry really, really loves sneakers and design and so on. But he's willing to put all of that aside so that he can get in Colombia and make his family proud. His parents are immigrants from Haiti. Or at the very least, his father is an immigrant from Haiti. And that shows up in the expectations um, he has of him and the expectations Henry has of himself. So, it has an interesting ending and there are interesting twists and turns. And, yeah, it was really charming. And it was also the sort of thing I'd love to put in a kid's hands because of the way it reimagines ambition. Like, what does it mean to want something? What does it mean to want to succeed? And how does one navigate that in the context of parental expectations? Then, next up is... The Window Seat, Notes from a Life in Motion by Aminata Fauna, which was read by the author. This is a collection of essays in which Aminata Fauna um, yeah, contemplates a life in motion and her life living across the world in different continents, in different countries, um, while existing in different like status, like immigration status. I'm not to, not to say like an, as an undocumented person, but for instance, as the stepchild of a diplomat, as the child of a white 
Scottish woman who has a black father, as a ch- child of a black father who went on to be killed by the regime of the country he was in and so on and also as a as an immigrant in the u.s and what that means navigating so not just navigating these different places but also navigating different social spaces different racial expectations and so on as with every collection you know someone hits someone misses what can i say i think that's to be expected i found it interesting that she has an essay in which she talks about a certain generation of african leaders that went to school in the us and the uk came back to form the ruling class of their countries and what that meant in terms of the lives they had led but also for some of them the spouses they brought back the relationships they forged and so on so quite an interesting collection and <laughs> i happened to read this as i was sitting smack in the middle of um a plane because <laughs> i had chosen a middle seat a middle of the middle seat okay so when i told my mom this is what i was reading she was like yeah not you reading a book about a window seat and sitting smack in the middle and i was like Never should have let these people know what seat I chose, you know. But yeah, that's just a random aside. Um, next, Mouth to Mouth by Antoine Wilson and read by Eduardo Ballerini. <laughs> so I picked this book up. If my camera is moving, it's because um, I'm holding it up with like spit and hopes and dreams. So uh yeah so i picked this up because sean the book maniac had a video where he was like yeah this book hits and i listened to it as i was traveling i mentioned this in the latest newsletter i'll put a link downstairs really the only way i was able to read while i was away from home was when i was in motion like i had to be in a bus or a plane or a a taxi or something Mm -hmm. like I'd be still and not be able to look at text, not be able to listen or, or any of those things. Yeah. And so, or even just walking, you know, but I rarely got to walk by myself. So sometimes I was <laughs> walking in my room anyway. Um, and so I listened to this on a, on quite a long trip and I have mixed feelings about it. So the concept is that this guy, sh- uh, it's an unnamed narrator, right? Shows up um at the airport at jfk um jfk is an airport in new york i don't know you know i just realized that sometimes when we talk about america it's like we all know what goes on there jfk as in the president an airport in new york um yeah and so he shows up at jfk and his flight has been delayed and then he bumps into a guy who he knew from university whose name is jeff and Jeff tells him this story where it's like, it's part confessional, part catch up, part why are you even telling this person who you've not seen in ages um, story that we're supposed to, I feel, think by the end of it, um, who deserves to live, who determines one's fate, because Jeff saves a man's life at the beginning of his story and essentially like insinuates himself into this man's life. Um... Did the story do interesting things? Yeah. Did it grip me till the very end? Yes. But the, at the ending, I was like, huh? <laughs> I read this book. Um, f- I borrowed it from a library that I where I share a card with Dawn. This is important because Dawn also read the book. And I would love, love, love to have actually have a conversation with him about it because it covers a lot of the art world which he exists in you know, more deeply than I do for context Don and I have a podcast called Covers where we discuss art so it's not like um, 100% outside that world or anything but you know he's deeper in it than I am and um, yeah I, I wasn't too sure what was going on I didn't not enjoy it but it is what it is then next Vladimir by Julia May Jones and read by Rebecca Lohman. <laughs> How and why did I pick up this book? I think I picked up this book because the book hotties, CJ, uh, Jalen and them. 
um, were reading it or of Rebecca, its books and them, um, were reading it or, you know, it was highly anticipated or something. And the story here is that our main character becomes fixated with this new member of the faculty at the school where she teaches called Vladimir, a younger man, in the wake of her husband being suspended from work because of um, allegations of sexual harassment of his students and so on. And yeah, I won't say hijinks and so, but it was supposed to be something like a me too novel meets um reckoning but we don't really see the man reckoning with what he has done and we see the woman in this weird position in which she sort of has to answer for her husband's actions which that makes no sense to me like that's his that's his business like that's on him um while also um um navigating this obsession she has um we tackle themes of mental health and consent and race, but not to any degree that I found impressive, to be honest. It was just like those times when you're eating something and you're like, oh, I have to finish the food on my plate. You know, that's sort of how I consumed this book. It was really weird. And also, I felt that this woman, who wasn't even 60, had this um, strange notion that, you know, she was unappealing, that, and I get that, yeah, I mean, women are taught that they're only sexually appealing for a, sh a short window, a small window in their youth, like in their 20s or f from their teens to maybe their mid 20s or whatever. And I imagine these things are also like culture dependent. But there's also a way in which I'm going to say this Western writers write about how older women feel about their bodies. That's so reductive that just reduces them to these um, husks which feel anxious about the fact that their bodies are sagging and so on. And it's like, I'm not invested in beauty by any stretch of the imagination. I couldn't care less about whether or not someone is beautiful. But a constant obsession at the tender age of, was it 56, was it 58, with one's body and essentially a hatred of the self. That stuff turned me off. So yeah, I'm going to move on. <laughs> Whoop! Ah! Okay. Uh, lastly, 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 before my whole setup collapses, and I have to start this afresh. Lastly, I read. Oh wait, that was the last book. That was book seven, and that's about it. I'm going to say it was uh, an interesting ten or so days of reading. Um, did I get any, you know, bangers? Maybe Elena knows, which I've even suggested to folks at my wage work spot uh, that we should, you know, read together and discuss. Um, so yeah, that, well, that was that was the week's banger. On the whole, I also enjoyed Charming as a Verb. It is a really charming book, and I love I love its message and so on. And I'm looking forward to, you know, the week ahead. Hopefully I'll have new books to report on, exciting um, books, or at least books that will have excited me, <laughs> you know. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and all the other good things. And I'll see you soon. Bye.